But the reason I believe Nui Dat was chosen yep. was that the American forces that had, the American High Command that had the responsibility for not only Phuc Thuy province, yep. uh, but Benoit province, Long Khan province, and other neighboring provinces, that higher command of American forces uh, agreed that the Australians would occupy and dominate, where possible, the Phuc Thuy province and uh, would only deploy into neighbouring provinces for operations where required. So in, in the Australians being given the Phuc Thuy province yep. in the mid-60s, um, it would have been evident that where is a suitable place for it, for a not just one battalion, but potentially a task force. And a task force uh, was generally three infantry battalions plus all the support troops, all the logistic and other support troops. So you needed a critical area that gave you a number of key elements necessary for a task force to occupy uh, a certain piece of ground. That is the overall size, the access in and out, the access to other neighbouring areas that you needed to um, have contact with, and also the element of security. So it was believed that Nui Dat offered the appropriate ground. A number of high features, for example, Nui Dat itself, uh, not far from the horseshoe, and of course, um, uh, not far from the logistic base at Bung Tau. I mean, it is a reasonable distance, but uh, the fact that Bung Tau was a, uh, a principal echelon area with all the resources that the Australian forces required, um, as much as so many re resources could come from Saigon, principally, Bung Tau was the uh, support base. And so Nui Dat being laid out as a major Australian uh, base uh, needed to be designed to cater for the different arms and services whether it was the infantry, the armour, the artillery, the engineers and the signals, or whether it was all the logistic support like the, uh, the um, electrical and mechanical engineers, uh, the catering, the medical, and, uh, and, and you know, petrol dumps, ammunition dumps. And then of course, um, uh, the means of getting in and out of the area, access to roads or what, what roads there were. So we've seen here today um, roads that are built on top of original roads that were here when we were here. Then we've seen new roads built, but access in and out of Nui Dat was very important for light vehicles and heavy vehicles. Uh, and then of course for aviation. Uh, the airstrip would, had to be capable of taking helicopters in great numbers. Um, whole company battalion liftoffs often occurred, um, particularly a whole rifle company or a number of rifle companies would be taken out of here uh, by helicopter or by armoured personnel carrier or by trucks. Uh, some operations commenced with the Australian troops leaving here by armoured vehicle and some by um, trucks taken out to a drop-off point. And of course, um, the quickest way of moving troops from here would have been by helicopter. And the other, the other aircraft that was used here were Cessna and uh, Pilatus Porter aircraft. And uh, Isumi, so during your uh, staying here at Nuda Space, you met any difficulty or maybe the trouble because they have a long time stay in the jungle like this? Yeah, I, 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 I remember very clearly, particularly standing here now um, in this filtered light. In fact, it's a little bit eerie. I can feel a, uh, an eerie feeling. Uh, the wind blowing through the rubber trees, yep. the filtered light. Um, uh, of course, there's not the noise here now that there used to be. Yep. But um, when we were out on operations, we always look forward 
to returning to Nui Dap. Nui, Tap, Nui Dap was going back home. And uh, if we were out on operations for one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks or more, um, you always hoped the day came when you would go back to Nui Dap. Oh. And if you were lucky, mm. you would then sometime be able to go to Bung Tao for some uh, rest and convalesce R&C. Maybe go down to the Peter Badco Club and maybe do a few other things. But the, the reality here was that if you came back to Nui Dat after an operation and just say you returned by helicopter or armoured personnel carrier, uh, after handing in your ammunition and some of your other equipment like flares and grenades, smoke grenades, hand grenades, uh, you would then move back to your lines and your, you would literally go back to your tent, the tent that you hadn't occupied for some weeks. But in that tent was a stretcher uh, or a bed uh, that you'd previously slept in. And under that was an old um, metal trunk. And I still have my metal trunk in Sydney. And in that trunk that you bought to Vietnam were the extra things that you didn't need out in the bush. So you would um, come in dirty, smelling, your clothes would be either torn or filthy and um, uh, you really just want to get out of your gear, have a shower um, and have something to eat and go up to the, the boozer as we called it, the, the canteen and uh, our canteen was called the Cell de Min, uh, I double N. Uh, for obvious reasons and um, of course there were duties to be done not everyone could switch off because when you return here every battalion coming back from operation had to do other things everyone just couldn't lie down and have a shower and have a rest people had to go on duties um, sentry duties picket duties kitchen duties um, doing something improving the area digging pits new toilet pits, um, whatever it might be. So even though we were back here off operation, you were always doing something. And if you weren't on duty doing one of those tasks that was necessary for the fire support base, you were training. And they're just outside here, I just can't fix where the shooting range was, but there was a shooting range here. And you could go to this shooting range and um, hone up your necessary skills, believe it or not, in um, shooting. And um, I can remember um, when I first got, um, not first got, but I remember on a particular um, occasion where we went out and we were shown to, um, shown how to um, uh, um, blow up certain booby traps and mines of a simple nature that, um, that you wouldn't necessarily need the engineers to help you with. But there was always something to do and um, there was occasions when you could have a little bit of relaxation and go to the canteen or go to the um, uh, like a rest room where they had a pool table and you can have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee how about your time during the wet season uh, don't talk about the wet season rain 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 the digging trenches around your tent to make sure the water got away and um, but of course life had to go on uh, I've got a photograph at home uh, showing um, some of the water in amongst our lines and um, you just took it on the chin um, it was probably more concerning in here because you're in here to rest and and, and uh, get ready for the next operation than being out on an operation where you expect to get wet uh, and feel uncomfortable and you just take it on the chin. So when we're out on operation, you'd be days on end in the rain, steamy weather, dirty, torn clothing. But when you're in here, you were, you were somewhat hoping you could have a bit of um, respite from that. Yeah. I, uh, I remember on one occasion, uh, some fellas in my platoon uh, were keen um, followers of the uh, Australian Football League. They were obviously Victorians and um, well, Southern New South Wales. And the grand final was coming up and uh, 
these guys in the platoon knew which teams were going to play in the grand final. <clears throat> and um, I remember them getting some paper yep. and sticking the paper together and painting Richmond or whichever football team uh, was their favourite. And they hung it up around their tent. And there was this um, focus on, oh, these guys must be from Victoria and they must be following the Richmond football team. Uh, and that gave a lighter moment to it. The other issue, of course, was um, coming in off operation uh, and relaxing and having a few beers at the canteen, and sometimes more than a few beers. Some of the boys with built up anxiety uh, would get change their behaviour. And there were some occasions where uh, people's tempers would overflow. And, um, uh, you know, or something might have happened out on the operation. And someone would say, you know, well, you know, you should have done this or you should have done that. And um, a bit of a blue would start, a bit of a fight. And uh, there was a bit of that. But of course, you had to watch yourself because, um, the, you know, it just wasn't on. And, and if you saw a fight start, uh, little did we know at the time that it was also a lot of Blake's letting off a bit of anxiety, a bit of steam, and you just took it on the chin and you ended up in an argument or a bit of a blue, well, you got it over and done with. Yeah. I can remember um, 